Shash Dile and welcome to In Conversation with Tibet TV. This is Sakina Bhatt. For today's episode, I have with me the Director of Outreach at the International Campaign for Tibet. ICT is a non-profit advocacy group which works to promote human rights and democratic freedoms for the people of Tibet. Joining with us, we have Tencho Getso. Tencho Getso, it's an honor to have you here with us. Thank you for coming to the show. Well, thank you for inviting me, Sakina. Tenshula, firstly, can, mm -hmm. you, uh, can you start by explaining to us about your role at the International Campaign for Tibet? So I've been with International Campaign for Tibet for about 10 years. Uh, I did many different roles. I was first working part-time for a while, um, and then I, start, I was Director of Tibetan Outreach and Chinese uh, Engagement. And more recently, I, I took on the role as uh, Director of Outreach. Um, and most of my job has involved um, uh, reaching out. So in the beginning, it was reaching out to Tibetan communities and others, and now uh, gearing towards uh, reaching out to ICT members, because um, ours is a, a membership organization. ICT was uh, started in 1988, um, after His Holiness visited uh, Washington, D.C., and he spoke at the U.S. Congress for the first time, mm -hmm. and he de delivered his five-point peace plan. And there was a lot of support then, and uh, at that time, His Holiness and the leadership then thought it would be a good idea to have an organization in Washington, D.C. that advocates for Tibet. And to, in the 90s, they said for the organization to last long, uh, they needed a better solution. Mm -hmm. So at that time, they decided to make it a membership organization. All our uh, efforts, all our work um, is funded by our membership base. So our membership base becomes very important. And that's why uh, part of my job now is to reach out to these members and to develop and uh, build the relationships uh, with the ICT members. So how many members are there right now? Are you able so, to develop a lot or are there few of them? So we have uh, over 100,000 members mm -hmm. worldwide. Okay. So ICT has offices uh, in Washington, D.C., uh, in Brussels, in Amsterdam, in Berlin. Mm -hmm. And then we also have uh, a partnership with Australia Tibet Council in Australia okay. and with Tibet Society uh, in U.K. So what kind of events and programs organized by the ICT involves the participation and the leadership of young Tibetans? Um, when I joined in 2008 mm -hmm. ICT, at that time there was the huge uprising in Tibet, all across Tibet, and um, we needed to figure out how we can activate and mobilize more and increase our impact. And we realized we have an increasing number of Tibetans in the West now, mm -hmm. especially in America where I'm based in Washington, D.C. Mm -hmm. So we decided, let us try and organize a Tibet Lobby Day. That was the first year in 2009 where we invited Tibetan Americans from across the U.S., and not just Tibetan Americans, but Tibet supporters also, brought them to Washington, D.C. Um, to educate them on how to advocate for Tibetan, for Tibet as constituents and as American citizens. 2009 till now, we've had 10 Tibet Lobby Days. We have every year over 100 people who come from across. This is one way we've been trying to encourage Tibetans to take mm -hmm. on a new role of advocacy. Um, and what it does is um, it helps um, for the um, congressmen to see, not just to see Tibet as a far off, small place where there's human rights abuse, but also to see it as uh, as something, an issue that their own people care about, mm -hmm. that Americans care about, that they have people who vote for them who care about it, so it becomes a domestic issue. So that's part of um, that effort. Uh, right now, you just mentioned about the Tibet Lobby Day, and that happens annually. Yes. So how do the congressmen and women respond to the lobby acts? They respond really well, and mm -hmm. I have to say we get the meetings much more quickly than we did in the first year. We've become part of their calendar also, mm -hmm. of their annual calendar, mm -hmm. and it makes a huge impact. We just passed, you might have heard on the news, uh, the Reciprocal Access to Tibet Act oh, that yes. was just passed By in the, the U.S. House. US House okay. So that was um, passed in the House. Mm -hmm. um, but this is something we've been working on a long time okay. and uh, over many Tibet lobby mm -hmm. days. And when Congressman McGovern first introduced this act, he did it not only in Congress, but simultaneously the week later 
he went to his home in Massachusetts, mm -hmm. and he did an event with the Tibetan community, and he launched the reciprocal access there with the Tibetan community. And the why he re knows there's a Tibetan mm -hmm. community is, is through this Tibet Lobby Day. Because the Tibetans have been coming to him and he knows he has a constituent base. So he's mm -hmm. tying the two together. Um, so the impact of this is um, growing. The most encouraging is this last Tibet Lobby Day. We had a lot of young Tibetans um, to speak about um, issues. Tenshula, ICT also organized the Tibetan Youth Leadership Program. So mm -hmm. can you tell us something about that? Yes, thank you for asking that. Um, that's a very special program dear to my heart. We focus on um, Tibetan American youth, and the idea is to have a program where they can come to Washington, D.C. for a week and learn about how the American process works, uh, how the debate on Tibet is shaped in the United States Capitol. And part of the reason why it's so special is because we have such a growing, fabulous group of younger Tibetans. I mean, you're one of those um, who are grounded in their Tibetan identity, mm -hmm. um, who are educated in today's ways, uh, and who want to do something for their country. And not only do they impress us, they impress all the people they meet. That shows that the Tibet issue, it's alive in the youth. And I think that's part of one of our efforts is to make sure that our youth find ways to k engage on Tibet in effective ways. So how is the selection process for this? So the selection process is very simple. Mm -hmm. We hold it every year in June when school is on break. And we only take in undergraduate or graduate students. And um, the applying has to write an essay on what it takes to be a leader in the Tibetan community. Okay. And um, we have a selection committee, and they're selected through that. So ICT also works towards freeing the Tibetan political prisoners in Tibet. Mm -hmm. So what kind of effort go into this work? For instance, what does ICT do to advocate the release of Tashi Wangchuk, the language rights advocate? Um, when you go to uh, congressional offices, when you go to um, U.S. government, what you go with is facts and information. And so part of what we do is we gather information on political mm -hmm. prisoners, we gather information on what's actually happening in Tibet, and we have a whole team um, with um, our director uh, of research, Kate Saunders, who's based in London. She writes the reports for us. The whole team, we write reports and we pull together the information on political prisoners to educate governments and educate policy makers on what is happening. Also, we do with our membership base, we do um, campaigns. Mm -hmm. So we ask members to write um, to, say, Secretary of State, U.S. Secretary of State, mm -hmm. to ask for the release of uh, Tashi Wangchu. And we gather all of these, and then we approach these offices and we say, we have we are a membership organization. We have so many people asking for that. Please raise this with the Chinese authorities. Mm -hmm. So that's part of what we do uh, on behalf of political prisoners. We've had the honor of bringing many political prisoners to Washington, D.C. He was able to highlight not just his, what happened to him, but share the story of all the political prisoners in Tibet. We've had um, Dundu Wangchen Lao. We have um, you know, um, Dundu Wangchen's wife before that. Okay, so in all the efforts that you put in, do you think that, oh. like, is there any mm. progress being made? Yes, because I think um, talking to Tindu Bonjela, talking to Kolok Jingme, talking to many of these political prisoners, they always say when our issue is raised in the West, when people talk about it, mm -hmm. then things become better for us in prison. So okay. there's a direct relation. So advocating and speaking up on behalf of political prisoners is very, very important because it makes life a little bit easier for them. This year, 2018, marks the 30th anniversary of ICT, 30 mm. years, which means supporting the Tibetan struggle for human rights and democratic freedom. So uh, what does it mean for ICT to hit the 30-year mark? That's a very good question, 30 years, um, but our work is not complete. Okay. Um, so we have a lot to do. So I think um, those of us at ICT, we're mm -hmm. taking uh, this 30-year uh, anniversary as an opportunity to raise the awareness about Tibet and to try our best to take it to the next level. But now uh, we're in a place where uh, uh, the situation is more dire than ever. 
um, with His Holiness's age, with uh, the t situation inside Tibet, the restrictions that China is placing on Tibetans inside there. All my colleagues and I think we are joined in feeling that this 30-year anniversary, we use it as best as we can to push our issue as much forward. We were really um, lucky, honored, and grateful that His Holiness was able to travel to Amsterdam, to Rotterdam in Holland, and uh, also have a very big uh, 30th anniversary event there, where thousands were able to watch the event and see the celebration of the 30th anniversary. Richard Gere, who is the chairman of ICT, always puts uh, Tibet in the forefront mm -hmm. of global political discourse. So you have worked with him, mm -hmm. and how has the experience been like? Working with Richard is just fabulous book of our job I think today we were able I was able to tell you share that we passed the reciprocal access mm -hmm. for, to Tibet Richard for the past two years has visited DC over 50, 10 15 times and every time he visits he comes for two days and we go knocking on Congress officers door to push on reciprocal access and part of the reason we're able to push this forward is due to his efforts also he makes phone calls he'll come in person he'll go take photographs with everybody in the office he really puts himself out there okay. so we're really lucky that you know we have somebody like him who you know who's constantly determined working. constantly mm -hmm. uh, willing to work and push himself forward for Tibet. I think he himself, he's very grateful for what Buddhism and what His Holiness and what Tibetans have given him. So he doesn't um, hesitate to share it and in the work that he does. Finally, tell us something about your personal life. How mm. do you juggle motherhood and being a full-time professional? Oh, it's very, very different, a very difficult <laughs> way. I'm lucky my son is now uh, in college, so mm -hmm. I'm able to work more full time. But uh, I think my support of your family, my husband mm -hmm. and uh, even my son, um, he many times uh, when it's school break, he'll come into the uh, office, office to do stuff envelopes for us and help us so when uh, a mother is able to work i think that it's the whole family um, whose support is needed Angela, thank you so much it, it was a pleasure to have this conversation with you today thank you for coming to our show thank you sakina i enjoyed it thank you thank you so much for watching and see you in the next episode of in conversation with tibet tv